Savior Jesus Christ, who does all things well. Mm -hmm. The psalmist said, this is the day yes, yes. that the Lord have made. Let us rejoice mm -hmm. and be glad in it. Yes. Well, we're having church here at Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, yes. Highway 431 yes. South, yes. Volula, Alabama. Today yes. we celebrate yes. Our fourth annual Senior Citizens Day. Yes. I should have some witness out there somewhere. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yes. Yes. I never would have made it yes. 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 without Him. All right. Amen. All right. So here it is, March the 20th, 2022. Our motto is, I can and will do better. Again, also the month of March is National Women's Day, or Women's Month, rather. Yes, yes. Our theme is Never Too Old to Serve. Amen. Yes. Our theme, Amen. Scripture says, Now also when I am old and gray-headed, yes, yes, yes. O God, forsake me not, yes, yes. until I have showed thy strength unto this generation yes, yes, and thy yes, power yes. to everyone that is to come. Yes. Psalm 71 and 18. Yes. Again, we just thank God for all of you this morning, taking time out of your busy schedule. Come to worship to little old friendship. Yes. Amen. We want to thank the deacons for that spiritual devotion. Yes. We want to thank the choir reminding us that there is a brighter day on somewhere.
the Bible said men should always pray. We're going to ask you to stand. Maybe you have somebody that needs prayer. We know that there's a lot of things going on. Family members who are going through illness. Death is still there. Children still need prayer. Those that are still grieving are still trying to put it all back together. But I invite you this morning, give it over to God. He's able to put it all together. Is there anybody that's standing in need of prayer this morning? I ask you to call the names out. Amen. Anybody else? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Merciful and everlasting God, we come once again standing in the need of prayer. Father God, we realize so much is going on in this world. There are those who are sick. There are those who are sick and shut in. And there are those who are grieving. There are those who have lost loved ones. Then there are those who are worried about the economics of this world. But help us to trust you, Father. Because you promised to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Help us to have our final resolve, which is to trust you and not trust the things of this world. Father God, we thank you this morning for all of those who called out names, and you know their needs. Yes. You know their circumstances. And we ask you to meet them right where they are. Comfort them right where they are. Heal them right where they are. Shine your light right where they are. Deliver them right where they are. We know that you're able. We know you got all power in your hand. So we ask you now, give them a touch right now. A touch from you, oh God. We all need a touch this morning. Father God, we're going through down here. You didn't ever promise the road to get easy, but you promised to always be there. Yes. So comfort us right now. Yes. Father God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the blessings of giving. We pray for all those that gave in this offering. Yes. Bless it in a mighty way, Father God, that there will always be meat in your house. It is in Jesus' name we pray, yes. and we do say amen, 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 amen. and amen again. scripture this morning it was put in my spirit to honor the women here at friendship so along with me and the deacons allow us to take a moment to give you your flowers while you living is that all is that all right this morning I'm gonna ask Yes, ain't but three of here this morning now. I got a little young man back there, but he, he don't understand yet. Right. I'm sorry, I got four of us. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Deacon Dix. I know you came in. Yes. So we're going to allow them, give them flowers, and they're going to go to every one of you, hand you your flower this morning before oh. we proceed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Forget the choir stand. You got the ushers over here. So don't. <laughs> just pull it down. Just pull it all the way. Just pull it down. No, just, just 
That's right. Keep going. Just pull it out. Or just pull them out. Or just pull one out of them. All right. We're going to get it together, y'all. That's all. all right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't worry about it. We'll, I, pastor will clean it up later. <laughs> Don't forget. Yeah. We'll, we'll get the choir saying, y'all. Just be patient with us. Amen. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> Why are they doing that? Y'all can't say the pastor don't love y'all now. Amen. Come on now. Come on. I know y'all know it. I know y'all know it. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. 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 No, I want. I'm gonna do something with them too. Hold, hold on, them too. No. Come on, it's enough. It's enough. That's right. I want Deacon. I want Deacon Austin. We know we had Sis Brown, and we know we had Sis Pierman. I want you to just lay them out there, cross for me, please, because we want to thank them for the impact. You can put them, just, yeah, just put them right there. Thank y'all. Come on, let's give the deacons a hand. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you. Again, God put that on my heart, and I just want to do that. A mother of the church who is so dutiful. Every time these church doors is open, uh -huh. the song said, this may be my last time, I don't know. And that's all of us. And I know we outnumbered this morning, men, but we still can hold our own now. Don't we? Amen. But we wanted to honor y'all this morning. So let's give, let's give these women a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 So our scripture reading this morning comes from Proverbs. Proverbs 31. And we would like to commence reading at verse 20. Proverbs 31. And we would like to start reading at verse 20. When you have it or when you find it, say amen. If you need a minute, say, hold on, preacher. Amen. I'm holding. Proverbs 21. 31. Proverbs 31 verse, and verse 20. Amen. Everybody got it? Say amen. amen. In verse 20, read. She stretches out her hands to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. Verse 21, she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Verse 22, she maketh herself covering of tapery. Her clothing is silk and purple. Verse 23, her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. 24, she maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdle unto the merchant. 25, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in the time to come. Verse 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. 27, she seeketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. 28, her children arise up and called her blessed, her husband also in her praise of her. 29, many daughters have done virtually, but thou excelleth them all. 20, verse 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And our final verse, 31, 
Give her her fruit of her hands and let her own work praise her in the gates. Amen. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and readers of his holy word. to all the senior citizens and everybody here this morning. Just listen to yes, the words yes, of it. Yes. And, to, and it'll take you back and make you think. right now, Lord. Strengthen us where we're weak, build us up where we're torn down. Yes. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are strength and our redeemer. Help us to look to the hills which come at thy help, knowing that all of our help comes from you, O Lord. You are strength and our redeemer. 
Bless this service right yes. now. Bless yes. the messenger. Bless your word will go forward and not return unto you void. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Yes. And we do say amen. 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 And amen, amen. again. Amen. Again, we greet all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. Thanking all the deacons, our chairman, all the deacon wives, our mother of the church, our musicians, our ushers. Deacon wives, my wife and family, my daughters, my little nieces and nephews that are in the back. We're just grateful for all of you this morning. We know we're celebrating our senior citizens, but allow me to detour today to honor all of these mighty women of God. Is that all right? If you have your Bibles, we would like for you to turn to one of the women who bear the name of Esther. Okay. Right. Esther chapter number five. And we would like to read verse one through eight for your hearing. Mm -hmm. Again, Esther chapter number five, verses one through eight. Might be a little hard to find, but that's all right. We're waiting because we don't want to leave nobody behind. Amen. It's right behind Nehemiah and right before Job. Amen. When you have it, go ahead and stand. Still want to wait a few minutes. Again, Esther chapter 5, verse 1 through 8. Verse 1 read, Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house, over against the king's house, and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, over against the gate of the house. And it was so, when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther a gold scepter that was in his hand, so Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. In verse 3, and it said, Then said the king unto her, What will thou, Queen Esther, and what is it thy request? It shall be even given thee to the half of the kingdom. Verse 4, And Esther answered, If it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. Verse 5, Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther hath said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. Verse 6, And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, what is it that thou petition, and it shall be granted thee? And what is it thy request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Verse 7, Then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is, Verse 8, If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king have said. Amen. You may be seated. When you read the story of Esther, which only two bear women names, there is Ruth, and there is Esther. But today I would like to use for a subject, honoring godly women. 
honoring godly women. Ushers, thank you for your service. We don't have to look very far to see that we have some powerful women throughout history. And each of us, even in our own lives, might discover mm -hmm. the woman, the super glue, that holds many families together. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not putting the men down today but I want to recognize something special about a woman that God knew. All right. All right. My brothers and sisters, God knew what he was doing when he took the rib out of Adam and put it in a woman and called her woe man. Yes, 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 yes. We take time today to say thank God for women, yes, yes. more specifically, a praying mother, oh, yes. a praying grandmother. Yes, yes. My brothers and sisters, let's be honest, we all need a covering. Mm -hmm. Like many of you that grew up, I remember being a little hard-headed, but yet I knew my mama prayed for me. <laughs> yeah, come on, help me somebody. Yes, yes, yes. See, we all had it together. All the days of our lives, but we thank God for a praying mother. All right. Many can attest this morning, there's nothing like a mother's love. Help me, somebody. That will come to your rescue. Now, I ain't never been there, but I heard some said, Mama even come get you from the drunk house. If you ain't acting right. <laughs> I said, I can't say that because I ain't never been there. But a mama will go get her child mm -hmm. when they stranded. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying this morning is there's nothing like a mother's love. Yes, yes, yes. My brothers and sisters, I remember growing up in that little old house. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, Deacon Dixon, I used to wonder why mama used to cry mm -hmm. all the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially when she would go inside that closet. Y'all know, I, I, I can't speak for nobody else. I can only speak to myself. Mama would go inside that closet and come out crying. But she was celebrating the goodness of God. Now, see, I'm a grown man now. Now I understand why Mama went in that closet. Because Matthew 6 and 6 says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou have shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and that Father which sees you in secret shall reward you openly. My brothers and sisters, I chose this text today because in my study, I found that Esther... Is unique mm -hmm. because her and Ruth is the only two that bear women name. Mm -hmm. Now I know many say, well, you know, a woman has her place. But why would God allow a book to be named after a woman? All right. mm -hmm. Now they say all scripture is given by inspiration. Of God. That's right, that's right. So we're not saying that a woman can't be who she is because God created them. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's God's providence. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's God's doing. It has nothing to do with Adam. Because the Bible says Adam was asleep. <laughs> he was asleep when God did his business. Uh -huh. So my brothers and sisters, when we look at the scripture, a woman is special. She has her own fingerprints. She has her own unique style. And she's God's doing. And all throughout the book, 
You can see Esther fingerprint on history. Because you're talking about history. We want to make sure you understand that God can use whoever he desires. That's right. That's right. I heard the choir say God got somebody. And it could be just in the form of a woman. I might not get any witnesses from men and they might not like what I'm saying, but the truth is God is God. And he can do what he pleases. My brothers and sisters, the book of Esther is God's divine guidance and shows you that he cares for his people. Yeah. It's God's sovereignty. His power is seen throughout the book. Mm-hmm. Although many people question that God's name is not mentioned in the book of Esther. Mm-hmm. But he wants to let you know he's there. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, yes. He's there through the actions mm-hmm. taken by Esther. Yes. God is still in control even when you can't see him. But you must trust him even when you cannot trace him. My brothers and sisters, Mm -hmm. history tells us that a woman hadn't always been treated fairly. Many can say today they still not treated fairly. Mm -hmm. When you look at the pay scale, when you look at the job market, when you look at all these things, we see that women... Pay is not up to par where men are. So you can say that women are not often treated fairly. Mm-hmm. You see it right now mm-hmm. with the Supreme Court nominee. They say, how is it that you overlook men and Biden selects a woman? I'm just saying, I'm just, it's, it's in the news, I'm just saying. But they say her credentials now. <laughs> They said her credentials are right there with everybody else. Yes, yes. So why not a woman? That's right. That's right. That's right. So why not? Mm-hmm. If her credentials meet all the qualifications yes, to be yes, a yes, Supreme yes. Court justice, why not? Why not? Mm-hmm. My brothers and sisters, yes, yes. God created women for his special purpose. Mm-hmm. At the close of chapter 4, we get the context of what our scripture is saying today. In chapter 4, we find that there was a charge, as Deacon Porch song this morning, a charge to keep our have Mm -hmm. a God to glorify. But that was a charge given to ensure the people had a covering. So you got to go back to chapter 4 because I I can only do chapter 5 because I don't have enough time this morning. But the good news is there's always a covering through prayer. That's why I said earlier, thank God for a praying mother. Thank God for a praying grandmother because we all need that covering. Right there in verse 13 and through 17 in chapter number 4, it said Mordecai gave a charge or a request to Esther. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. It's right there. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, Then shall the enlargement and the deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou in thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such such a time as this. Then Esther bade them to return Mordecai this answer. Go. Look what he says now. What she said. Go. Gather all together. All the Jews that are present in Shuhan, and fast ye with me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. So this is the setup for chapter number five. So at chapter number five, 
On the third day, the moment had arrived. Esther had fasted and prayed, and three days prior, she had been willing now to sacrifice her physical craving for food in order to heighten her spiritual awareness because she needed divine insight to know how to proceed. Can I tell you, if you're looking for direction, pray and ask God to lead you. And don't you know he'll lead you every step of the way? He'll give you everything you need. He will equip you for the journey which is ahead. The scripture says she's decked in all her fine apparel. The queen stood in the courtyard and the king was sitting in his royal throne. Osiris had, had not requested her. So she was breaking loyal protocol as you will. Now you know you just can't go to the White House if you don't have the credentials. You can't get in the White House unless you have the proper documentation. You can't just go and shake Biden's hand without going through all the problems. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, y'all. You just, you, just you just can't do it. There's a certain procedure that you got to go through in order to meet the prerequisites. But she, but she, fitting in all her apparel, approached the king, hoping to get favor. My brother said, but unseen, it said God was at work in this scripture. Because the scripture says Esther gained favor in the king's eyes. I'm walking the scripture. He extended the golden scepter toward her, granting her permission to draw near. I would like to pause right there because my brothers and sisters, this is a life and death situation because her life is in the king's hand. Now, if he did not find favor with her, she would be put to death, Deacon Porch. The king, the queen would be dead, but yet, God is still in the midst. Y'all don't see it. God is in the midst of all of that. So we look at this. She had freedom to approach the king. My brothers and sisters, not only did she have favor, but the king said half of the kingdom is yours. That had to be some type of favor from the king. So now you see the hand of God moving my brothers and sisters, God will open, open doors for us. But it's up to us to proceed with caution to do his will. Yes, yes. But not only that, the queen took the opportunity not just to invite the king, but to also invite old Haman, who had a grudge. You don't see it yet because we're not there in the scripture. So King Osiris readily agreed and sent for Haman. During the meal, he told his wife once more, Whatsoever you ask, I will give unto you. At this point, she feels a little at ease. But yet, she's still a little fearful because there's still tension because she don't know how it will go. Then Esther declared, this is my petition and my request, but I need you to come back tomorrow. <laughs> well, uh, all right. You got to see it. You got to see it. He, uh -huh. Sometimes you got to operate with patience. Yeah, yeah. Because don't you know, God time sometimes ain't our time. Uh -huh. well, you got to pray and say, Lord, is this the right time? Yeah, yeah. But he asked him, she asked him to come back. For another meal. We must understand. Delayed do not mean denied. Because God timing. Is everything. My brothers and sisters. In this story. God was in the control. From the very beginning. Yet Mordecai and Esther. Had to act. God had opened the door. And it was for them. 
to fast and pray that they will open the door. We cannot understand what was going through Esther's mind, but the one thing we can say this morning, she was courageous in her act to approach the king even when it was out of season. Even when it was out of order, she stepped out on faith to do what God had asked her to do in order to save her people. God chose work for her to do, and she stepped up to the plate. And she hit a home run. We should pray as everything depends on God. My brothers and sisters, everything matters when it comes to our family. Everything matters when it comes to serving the Lord. Everything matters when we come in contact with unbelievers. Because we are to testify to the goodness of the Lord. Yes, yes. With God in charge. We can take courage to do what's right. We can, he can guide us through circumstances we face in life. We should expect God to display his power. Because even Paul said his grace is sufficient and made perfect in our weakness. Sometimes we don't feel like going. But yet, with God on our side, who can fail? Nobody can fail. Because Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, yes, yes. So because God is in control of history, he's never frustrated. He's never frustrated because of the coronavirus. He was never caught off guard two years ago. He knew everything would come to fold. It was us that needed to reassure us yes. of our faith. It was our faith that was being tested. Are your faith being tested? Because God is still in the blessing business. Yes. My brothers and sisters, it is true in Isaiah day and it is still true today. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. But as we get to looking at a godly woman, Proverbs 14 and 1 says, Every wise woman built her house, but the foolish pluckers it down with her hand. Proverbs 14 and 1. But then there is Proverbs 31 and 30, which we read this morning. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. Amen. So as we look at Esther this morning, her strength and her accomplishment can be seen throughout her chapters. Number one, her beauty and character won the heart of a Persian king. She combined courage with careful planning. She was open to advice and willing to act. She was more concerned with others than for her own life. Lesson that we can take away this morning from Esther being a godly woman is serving God often require us to sacrifice ourselves for the sake of others. You remember Jesus? Jesus in John 15 and 13. Jesus said, greater love have no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friend. And I believe this is what Esther had in mind this morning. Because God often places us in unusual situations. He equips us to finish what we have started. Character is key when we examine godly women. Then and now. The first thing we see this morning with Esther is identity. Whether man or woman, from the hand of God, we all are cut from the same cloth. Yes, the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 21 through 23. It said, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Yes. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he woman, and brought her unto Adam. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone. Yes. Flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. 
the lesson is this morning is no matter how high you get, never lose your identity. We all have a physical DNA that connects us to our mother and father, but we also have a spiritual DNA that connects us to Jesus who died and rose again for us. A godly woman is one who is a hospitable, a servant of God. There is great joy when you find your purpose in life. And I believe all the women here today have found their purpose because they're in the house. They're in the house of God, praising and serving the Lord. Yes, yes. My brothers and sisters, I'm an original, a woman might say. I'm tailor-made just as the suit or dress I am wearing. I measure up because God has created me. He has given me an assignment who he has in store for me. The psalmist said, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Psalm 139 and 14. The second thing we see with Esther this morning is influence. Influence. Influence is the power to inflect, infect, influence. It is making an impact. It is making a strong impression. Despite a culture that is male-dominated, women still have their influence to make a difference in this world. Women have made great strides throughout history, but women most of all have a biblical role in society helping the church to establish what we call the Great Commission. Yes, yes. My brothers and sisters, the Bible encourages all Christians, both male and female, to follow the commandments of God in telling others about what Jesus have done. Just as one woman uh, encouraged an instrument of salvation for his people, he still used women today who are willing to proclaim his name. Yes. Esther reminds us, you must count everything as lost because of the surpass surpassing work of knowing Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One other woman, which is Deborah, which yes. we all know, yes. played a unique role in Israel history, serving as the only female judge, that a judge come up again, in a lawless period before the country got its first king. In this male-dominated culture, she enlisted the help of a mighty warrior by the name of Barak yes. to defeat the oppressive yes. general Sincerea. Yes. Deborah, wisdom and faith in God inspired her people. Our third and final thing, yeah. Esther reminds us about interceding. Yeah. To intercede is to be willing to compromise. This is often done through intervening, arbitration, or mediation. Mm -hmm. One of the outstanding women of the Bible is Hannah, mm -hmm. who prayed for a son. Yeah and then dedicated him to the Lord, right. even right. before he was born. Hannah's faithfulness was rewarded in the person of Samuel, who served his nation as a prophet, a priest, a judge, during a crucial time in his history. When we consider interceding a few years ago by the woman by the name of Harriet Tugman, which we all know, which was an American abolitionist, yes. a political active, born into slavery. Tugman escaped and subsequently made 13 missions to rescue approximately 70 enslaved people, right. including family and friends, using the network of anti-slavery activists, safe houses known as the Underground Railroad. Can I tell you this morning, God is no respect of person. Whoever comes to him in prayer, he promised to listen and answer. Prayer is not wasted time, but 
Prayer is communion and interceding on behalf of someone else. The power of prayer and the power of praying women gives one the opportunity to pray for others. My brothers and sisters, the story of Esther is one of being in the right place in the right position to intercede on behalf of her people. This is significant because Esther saved the Jewish people from destruction, protecting the line for the future Messiah. You got to see God's hand in this. He didn't do this by accident, but he was on purpose because he knew one day the Messiah would come on the scene. My brothers and sisters, interceding have long been a part of our lives. I know they're taking prayer out of schools. I know they're taking prayer out of a lot of things. But they have not taken prayer out of our hearts. They have not taken prayer out of the home. You still can pray because God promised to answer our prayer. So as I prepare to leave you this morning, as we honor you Godly women. Uh I want to let you know that was another godly woman. Who God chose by the name of the Virgin Mary. Uh The one that God chose to bring forth the Savior Mm -hmm. of the world. She is an example of favor, faith, and humility and service. God often takes the ordinary in order to do the extraordinary. There is much debate about a woman's place in the world. But I'm glad that women are still fighting for equality and power. The longing for a place and space in the world derived many from prestige position. But a godly woman finds satisfaction where God has her. It's not necessarily where your position or your status is. The truth of it is where God has you. Her heart is important to her as she checks in with God on a daily basis. My brothers and sisters, and there's nothing like being in tune with God. A godly woman is more diligent, integrity, and has wisdom. She is an example of high measures of godliness. She lives a faithful life that shines the love and the light of Jesus. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, I can hear Mary say, here is the baby Jesus who is in a manger wrapped in swaddling and clothes. The one who came down through 40 and 2 generations. The one who was born to a virgin called Mary. The one who came to redeem man from their sin. You do know who he is. Emmanuel which means God is with us. The one who will heal the sick and bring sight to the blind. The one who will make the lame walk and the deaf to hear. You know who his name is Jesus. The one that will one day take a cross upon his shoulder and march up a hill called Calvary and give his hands to the nail and his feet to the river. You know his name Jesus. The one who said if I be lifted up I'll draw all men unto me. You know the one who will pierce in his side. Blood and water come running out. And he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder. He declared it finished. And he died. He died for you and he died for me. They took him and put him in another man's tomb. He stayed there all night Friday. All day Saturday. All night Saturday night. But it was early on that third day morning. He got up with all power in his hand. Saving power. Healing power. Delivering power. And now, Mary's baby is seated at the right hand of the Father. Making intercession on behalf of the people. See, you know, Esther interceded. But I'm thankful that Jesus now intercede on our behalf. Yes, Lord. Yes, he sent us the comforter yes. in the form of the Holy Spirit yes. to watch over us, mm-hmm. to comfort us, to direct us, 
to lead us every step of the way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Do you know him this morning? Yes. I'm yes. thankful for Jesus. Yes. All that he has done yes. to allow us to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. To yes. one day yes. to make it in uh -huh. to heaven. Yes. Jesus said, I am the way. Yes. I am the truth. Yes. I am the light. Yes. Yes. No man cometh unto the Father yes. Yes. but by me. Yes. This is what Jesus has done. But we thank God for a godly woman who birthed Jesus. Because if there's no birth, then there is no Christ. But because of Mary and the miraculous birth, now we have a Savior. Now we have a way maker. Now we have an overcomer. Yes. Now we have a redeemer. Yes. And now we have a deliverer. Yes. And he is the word, the living word. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. This is a message today as we honor you, women of God. We're standing all over the building. Yes. We offer Christ to you this morning. You come by your letter, Christian experience, or candidate for water baptism. There's good news today that Jesus has prepared a way. And because Jesus has paved the way, we have the right to the tree of life. He's done it. For the scripture said, For God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Will there be one? We offer Christ as a choir prepared to sing. Will there be one? God bless you. May keep you is our prayer. Sing choir. Be ready. He's going to 
gonna call be ready. to eternity. Be ready if you ain't ready. Be ready if you ain't ready. Be ready if you ain't ready. Be ready. Be ready. Tell me what be ready. are you gonna do? Be ready. There's a man. Say it. Yes. I think of yesterday's misdeed mm -hmm. when no one seemed to be there. I recall the words that gave comfort. Give it to God in prayer. Yes. Mm -hmm. I asked our Father to guide me to ease all my worry and care. In the silence, I hear a voice. Give it to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. yes. I'll face tomorrow with hope as life's lessons I gladly share. It's never as dark as it seems when you give it to God in prayer. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. to his head. God's unchanging hand. He was a whore to his hand. God's unchanging hand. He was a million on things he died. Heavenly Father, we come now thanking you for another day's journey. Father God, I thank you for the men and women here at Friendship. Thank you for the other churches, Father God, Greater New Jerusalem and Mount Olive Glenville, Father. We thank you for the fellowship. We thank you for the godly women that are here today. We thank you for allowing us to honor them, Father. Continue to keep them. Sustain them. Give them everything they need to run their race with patience and endurance. Continue to help us, Father God, in this race, giving us everything, equipping us with everything we need. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, the rest fruit and abide with us henceforth, now and forevermore. And the church says, Amen. 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 Go in peace.